Hi everyone and welcome to the Origami Easel Rainbow Heart Card Tutorial featuring Hero Arts, Memory Box, and Kurataki Gansai Tanbai watercolors. A list of supplies and tools is available in the description under this video and at times throughout the video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy it. So you might be wondering about this Origami Easel card. When you have a beautiful card like this, you'd like people to be able to stand it up so it won't fall down. So I took the explosion card fold and I did part of it to create this stand that actually holds the sentiment inside. And then when you're gifting the card, they receive it, they take it out of the envelope and they can just sit it right there if there isn't a piece of paper and it'll stand up. We start off with our 80 pound cardstock at 11 by four and a half, four and a quarter, excuse me, and we score it at five and a half inches. Now we're going to take our MISTI. If you don't have a MISTI tool, you can just use a clear acrylic block. And I'm going to stamp these, the Valentine sentiment from this heart floral set from Hero Arts on the inside of my card. I've already set up the stamp, and I'm just going to place my cardstock into the MISTI and stamp it with the verse mark, and then I'm going to pour some. Wow gold embossing powder over the sentiment and heat set that real quick. Then I've got a little piece of vellum here that's however many inches long and it's a half an inch tall and I'm going to set, stamp this other sentiment from the same stamp set on that piece of vellum. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me something I can make a little better out of to go on the front of my card. Now it's time to create our origami easel. I'm laying out my card and I'm going to score it at six and at ten and a half and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to score it at six and ten and a half again. And what that'll do is that'll give me points to look for when I'm doing my folding. You take one corner and you flip it up and what you want to do is you want to line up the piece of paper between those two marks so that it's a half an inch from the center of the card. And then you'll press it down and then you'll do the other side as well the same way. And it just so happens that when you fold it and press it down that the half inch mark on the bottom, the ten and a half inch mark that you did, will line up with that six inch mark on the opposite side kitty corner. Okay, so then we'll get nice tight creases with our bone folder. And then we'll flip it over and we want to get nice tight creases going the other direction as well. And then we will press in the center on the opposite. It's going to be the back of the card, I guess, if it was a regular card. We're going to press in on the sides until they lay flat. And then we're going to use our bone folder again to make sure that those edges are real tight. And put some adhesive on. Then we flip up the top. And ta-da! And we have our sentiment inside. Now it's time to create this stamp and we're going to use this memory box heart die. And I just thought it was really pretty. I saw a door and I was inspired by the wrought iron curls and I saw this stamp and I thought that's perfect. I'm going to use a piece of white foam and I'm going to put it on my big shot and on the precision plate because that way the intricate cuts will be much more defined and just real easily take care of all the excess. And I don't know about you, but I think this in and of itself would be just beautiful on the front of a card. Um, maybe some lilac paper or red paper. Then I'm going to put some adhesive on the back, which would be the flat side, and attach it to my acrylic block. I'm going to use my embossing buddy on my watercolor paper. 
and then apply the Versamark onto my stamp. And I'm going to press that down onto the paper fairly hard. I don't want to, not too hard, but not too soft as well. I really want to make sure the image gets down onto the paper. And I don't have the same cushion as when you have a regular stamp, so you've got to make up for that. So I stamped a few on there, and now I'm using my Wow Clear embossing powder, and I'm going to sprinkle that on, and I am sped this up because you really can't see anything. Then you get your resist area, and now I've got my watercolors that I got for Christmas, thanks Lisa and Steve, and I took a rainbow of colors out of the box, just so you'd be able to see them, and I'm going to use a wide watercolor brush, and I've got my water there so that I can clear it off between brushes, between colors. And then I've got this strip that's going to go behind my sentiment and we're going to give that a quick little wash too. So I start by applying water all over my watercolor paper and I'm just going to start applying the color in the old Roy G. Biv pattern. Now one thing you should know is I am not an artist. I do not consider myself a watercolor artist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just am playing and, and doing this freehand, not really well thought out, but it works. And it's what I find fun about it. I don't have to have any special training or, you know, artistic abilities. I just can play and that's what I do. Sometimes I do a color combination and it's awful and I just want to throw it away or I do throw it away. Or I can cut, use other die cuts like curly cues and stuff to die cut those and they turn out really cool too. Um, and I let it dry for a bit. Now I'm going in and I'm doing another layer of color. And I'm just tweaking it here and there as I go to see how I'm washing my brush there. And, um, and I can clean up that yellow, how it got the other color in it. You can clean that up when you're done. You just wet it down and wipe it off and you don't really have to worry too much about muddying up your colors. And every time you paint, every layer you do, it can get darker and darker. And that's another thing I like about the watercolors. I also like the fact that if you make a mistake, you can just put a bunch of water on it and a paper towel and you're good to go. It, it typically will correct itself or go away and you can keep working with it until you have it the way you want it. Now I'm doing a quick wash of the turquoise because I'm going to put the sentiment down in that turquoise area on the front of the card. So I'm just drying that off. And I had cut a flag end on this piece of vellum, so I'm just using that as a template. And then I'm going to slightly move the sentiment piece so that a little bit of the watercolor paper is sticking out of the end the, on the flag end. And then I'm going to take my zig marker and I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the words that have been embossed and it's awesome because nobody can see that there's glue there. And I'm going to set that up and adhere it together and put it aside, trim it up so that's ready to go. Now I've got my piece, my art piece and I'm putting it between some typing paper and as I iron, which I don't normally iron, I bought this iron just to be able to do this technique. As you iron, you remove the embossing powder. And so you have a flat matte piece that nobody can tell how you got that image onto the paper. And so it's kind of cool. It's a, like a magic trick. Here I have a base, a uh, card base that's uh, the wa same watercolor paper because I wanted to match the color. And I cut it with the rectangle die, the largest one from the Lawn Fawn rectang stitched rectangle die set. And I'm putting adhesive on my art piece and I'm going to center it on that backboard. Then, after I've done that, I'm also going to put some adhesive on the back of that. Let's see, I don't know which piece I did next. Did I flip it over or not? Yes, I flipped it over. 
Okay, so I'm putting the adhesive on the back and then I'm going to take my easel card that I've created and I'm going to attach this onto that front of the easel card. I'm make sure to line it up real carefully. And then I decided not to put any foam tape or pop-ups on this. I just felt like it was a, just a beautiful card as is. It really didn't need anything extra. And so I'm just going to take that sentiment, put a little bit of tape, and adhere that to the front of the card. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It has that rustic feel to it that I really love. And it's happy and it's all about love. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, I hope you like it and I hope you share it with your friends and subscribe. And if you make it, I'd love it if you could send me a picture or add it in the comments below. And let me know if you want to see more of my videos. Thanks again for watching.